Okay, this is uh, part two of the Catlin tutorial. And uh, this part I'm going to show how to record a script and, um, and clean it up with the recorder. I'm going to use just a uh, BBC uh, homepage just as an, uh, as an example. And so but let's go back to the, the binary directory and we just start the, the recorder. So right, so there's a couple of things that we need to note. First of all, the proxy itself uh, will run in a you know configurable port. It shouldn't have any conflicts, so we're just going to run it on that one. Um, there's a couple of options that you might need to change: is whether you follow redirects, are you inferring HTML resources, inferring meaning. Um, it will try to. My understanding is that what it tries to do is tries to parse the HTML and see whether there are some resources like CSS, the JavaScript, uh, and try to download those. Um, now, so leave it as settings as they are now. Uh, also, this is where it will we'll output the, the, the file. Essentially, it's under the user files in our Catlin directory. Um, there are some whitelist and blacklist options. We will not touch that for a moment. The first, what we do is we'll just start the, um, the recorder, right? And there's no events yet because we haven't configured the proxy. The, 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 the browser used the proxy, right? So what we need to do in, in Chrome, settings, um, so it's advanced settings, I believe. Network change proxy settings. And uh, you know, it depends what you use, IE, um, Safari, they should all have similar options. So what we will do is, right, we're not, we're not using proxy at, the board, um, at, at all. So we're going to define web proxy at localhost, um, port 8000, right. Apply, let's jump in here. Let's see if we refresh this page. Right, okay, if we now jump back into the Catlin recorder, we can start seeing the resources and and seems to be working, right? So that's all we did. I just refreshed the home page of, of BBC News. Um, that, that, that should be it. So if we now stop and save, it seems like there's something happening in the background, actually, a ping of something, yeah. So let's just stop that and now that should have saved us a file in under simulations. So if I, well actually, if I go back here and create a new one. Right. Sorry. So if we now got the user files, that's when it was created and simulations. That this is our um, recorder simulation that the recorder has just just created. So if I just to very quickly um, view that file, uh, so it looks very similar to to the script that is on the the Gatling website, essentially displaying the the base URL, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let me just close that recorder for now because we don't really need any more now. What I was saying earlier is that the, the scripts produced by the the, the, um, the recorder can be a bit hard to read. Um, you've got the naming of the requests and and the sheer number of requests is quite big. Um, so normally at this point, what I would do is kind of go through this script and identify what I want to. Um, don't want to test. Uh, typically, um, when you do performance testing, you will not necessarily download the static content. You're more interested in the performance of the generation of the dynamic content, so your HTML, for example. If your static content like um, images and CSS might be d delivered by the CDN or, or very fast uh, static web servers, is won't really get much of an idea of 
you, you, you really don't really see much of a performance degradation by increasing the load in those services, but you will definitely see that on, on your dynamic, so whether it's Java or Python or Ruby or PHP or whatever. But firstly, it's just that there's so much stuff on this on this script that it's just kind of difficult to understand the requests and what they're doing. Um, so, irrespective of that, we know, now have the recorded uh, simulation. If I now go back to my binary directory and run Gatling, hopefully that should now show up. So previously we had these options. Um, zero is basic simulation and, and there's some advanced simulation step that show how Gatling can be used. But now our recorded simulation should show up as an, an, an option. Don't want to do is obviously run a test against the BBC News, but uh, um, we can probably just run one user. So, so by default, uh, if I just go to the bottom of this one, it is by default creating a scenario with one user only. So if I run this, record a simulation, get an idea what the output looks like. Okay. And as you run it, you get an output of kind of a, a log file of how, how things are progressing. Um, like I say, there's a lot of uh, resources that are showing up on a log file. It's showing up on the script and that they also show up in the log file and any error in there will show up as a line here. So it can be kind of difficult to understand what is going on when you run your test for the very first time. Respective, it also posts your test, it runs, it compiles your kind of quick overview of your minimum, maximum, mean um, values, how your, your requests are distributed. But more interestingly, it will actually generate a HTML report for you. So if I go here, this is the actual report that Gatling will provide you. Right? So first of all, interestingly, we have quite a lot of errors, 64 errors and 54 requests. So what we're saying is we had over 100 and over 100 requests were done just for the BBC website. And it gives you a distribution of the response of each individual request. Um, and it gives some concurrency figures, but obviously we only run one user at one, one iteration essentially. So you don't really get much of an idea there. I will get into the, into the scenario definition a bit later in, in this um, uh, tutorials, but looking at this output essentially looks clearly that we need to start cleaning up the script because it's not really understandable to anybody. Why is a request 55? Um, it's failing. Um, just a brief note about the, the output of the um, output of the, the report. You have basically a total number of requests. Okay being successful, K or B not successful, uh, the percentage, uh, how many requests per second, what is the minimum and then the different percentile values of those requests, time, the, the request uh, response times. So maximum value being 1.1 seconds, so this is in milliseconds, and the fastest time being 12 milliseconds. Now, so looking again back in the script itself, Just go in the beginning. So the names of those requests, for example, here is a request underscore one is something that you can override. So if I now, for example, remove say this is news on page. Right. Now, if I rerun that test, that should, instead of saying request underscore one, it says news homepage. Now, there's obviously more to the cleaning of the script than that. Um, I would say the first step uh, you want to make, you want to make, decide whether you want to do the request for the 
um, study content or not.